the production that I have been directing uh, with Hayden, by the way, as my assistant, is Look Homeward Angel. And I felt at age 15, it, wouldn't it be wonderful to either be in this play? I was thinking of myself doing the central role of Gene or directing it, but at, at the time I thought, will I ever be able to get a group together to build this incredibly challenging set? And it's a huge cast. He's one of the most well-rounded, most textured characters I've ever played. Probably the most so far, because there's a lot of, uh, he is not just uh, he's not just a good guy or a bad guy. There is a lot of he's got all, he's got his virtues and his vices. He's got his positives and negatives, and uh, he's a very kind and compassionate person who has a pretty pretty high capacity for being cruel too. And that that is uh, that is what makes him more really real to me. And uh, those are the kind of characters that draw me. That's the, the, these are the kind of characters that keep me hooked. Ben is certainly one of those characters that's gonna stay with me for a while because uh, number one, he's just incredibly, he's got an incredible resemblance to real life me. <laughs> but, <laughs> except for a few things, yeah, but like there's a lot of things that, that I really, really, really relate with him on and um, I know what it feels like to be an older brother trying to look out for your younger brother when your younger brother may not yet be ready to, to to take in what you're trying to give him, I feel. <laughs> okay, I certainly know something about that. Sherm is not shy about going just fiercely to, to um, the, the limit of his expressive power. I mean, you can always rein him in, but he's, he just, he, he lunges for it, and and when he and, and when he opens up, it's uh, often it gives you the visceral shakes. It's so strong, and I think what's remarkable about this family is that they say things that in so many family settings would be utterly unfor unforgivable. I mean, the, the cross, whatever lines you can imagine, well, that's it then. I mean, if you say this, nobody's gonna talk to you for a couple of years, maybe, until they get themselves patched up. But it, the Gants, all of them nearly, can say these outrageous things. And it's not that people forget that they've said them, but um, they, they're all combative and they, and they seem to walk away and, and return almost as though these confrontations hadn't taken place, which, which is a pleasure, of course, for someone seeking theatrical excitement. Can, can you uh, describe a little bit about the, uh, the relationship that you have with Stoltz now? And, George Stoltz? Uh, George Stoltz. Especially like, oh, focusing uh, in on the style and how... George Stoltz is... Off of that and all yeah, George Stoltz is like one of the coolest cats around, damn. It's like, uh, it's, uh, what should I say? He's one of the smartest people I've ever met. His brain is so quick. It's, um... And also, um, what I like about his directorial style is he cares more about your, the actors, his actors' relationships with their respective characters than the presentational aspect of theater, I think. And what happens as a result of that is the presentation is enhanced automatically because your actors know what they're doing or saying exactly they they're every single word they say is fully motivated and if everyone in a cast is doing that the presentation the way the show looks is going to be amazing 
it's filled with surprises that way. It, it doesn't go soft, though it's full of feeling. And I would say the, the greatness of the play, other than its solidity of construction, I think, is its, its ability to manage so many complicated, surprising tonal shifts and giving their due to so many characters, not only within the family, but outside it, uh, without uh, the central focus on Gene being lost. Thank you.